So just this morning, I remembered that I worked on Paul Blart Mall Cop for some random reason. I like completely forgot. <laughs> this was like one of the funniest, kind of more relaxed, like absurd shoots that I worked on. And uh, definitely want to tell a story about that. <laughs> if you have not seen this movie, um, Paul Blart Mall Cop is about a middle-aged uh, security guard at a mall somewhere in America. Now, um, I believe it, for the purposes of this movie, they said it in New Jersey, I believe. Um, but actually, it was filmed at a mall um, near Bur Burlington, Mass, just uh, north of, Bo just outside of Boston. In 2008, if that's, if you had your SAG card in 2008 and you were working actively in New England, chances are you were working on Paul Blart <laughs> for at least a uh, a couple of days in any capacity, whether, you know, background or crew or craft service or whatever. It was a production that was big, big budget, a big bu budget film. And it came to this mall and it took it over. To create big, large mall scenes, you need a lot of Hollywood small fry. You need a lot of uh, background. You need a lot of stand-ins for your principals. You need, uh, for this particular work in the mall, um, the scenes that I shot were around the panic mode where the mall was being taken over by these uh, skateboarding thugs who were robbing the mall and, you know, terrorizing the people in the mall. All Hollywood small fry in the mall. So every, every single person in the background that you see, there's no random person there. That mall has been shut down, completely encapsulated. All the stores were open. All the merchandise just hanging out, like just frozen. No security systems, nothing. And we're all just, they've just taken over this mall exactly as it is. And they're shooting inside this mall with hundreds of small fry. So the Kevin James character is a really likable character and uh, definitely cuddly. As far as the story goes, I thought the movie and the storyline was really charming. And if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to. It was a really well done film, you know, and the, and uh, I believe it was owned by Adam Sandler's production company, which loved to shoot in that area at the time. So I don't know if it was, was it connected to Happy Madison Films? Uh, I think it probably was, but I can't guarantee that, and uh, I guess I'll go back and research that. Um, hundreds of people inside a mall where every store is open with no security, nothing, and all you're listening for is a megaphone, and you're following a person with a headset who's kind of stationed at every block along in the mall, and it's like time has been frozen, right? In order to control that many people, in order for a director to control an entire freaking mall, people, of I guess you could call them, you know, players, right? One of them can't even be out of, they, they all have to be working in sync to create this illusion that this mall is being taken over by these bad guys. And so you need everybody to do this, the right thing. You can't afford for not a single person. No small fry can be messing up. Um, that order and hive mindedness is extremely important in Hollywood. Everyone has to be on board. Everyone has to be connected to the hive mind on a Hollywood set. Everyone has to, move only when they're told, speak only when they're told, do a reaction shot only when they're asked to, uh, do exactly what they want to, step on your marks when told to, one time, follow directions, eat lunch when told to, blah, 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 I could go on and on, but it's all very totalitarian, right? And you're having a good time. You don't even realize that it's totalitarian. You're just following the directions. You're just like, do do do. I'm a good little small fry. I'm following all my instructions. And hundreds of people do it, and it's astounding. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not pointing, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. I'm, I'm pointing out this observation that hive mindedness and connectedness has always been in Hollywood. It's always been done very well there, and that's the only way. You know why? Because that's the only way you can create an illusion is if everyone is in on it, is if everyone is connected. Everyone is doing the same exact thing. That's the only way you can get them all to keep a secret. They've got to all be c controlled by, the, you know, whether it's a director on a set or whatever in real life. You know, apply that same thing to, to I, I don't even like to say what we're currently living is real life because I'm, I'm convinced now that what we're living is fantasy and this all, all that stuff that you see on TV and films and everything is actually like the real world. So Paul Blart is a funny movie, basically, and it just, uh, like a lot of Adam Sandler type films, it's like really funny and enlightening and it pokes fun at the human condition. And so one of the scenes is Paul Blart uh, that I did was uh, they, ha they got a whole bunch of female 
small Hollywood small fries to go into this Victoria's Secret. It was uh, completely open. There were no, I mean, I think there, I have no idea if there was a Victoria's Secret employee there or not. I mean, I have no clue. But uh, it was basically an open store with uh, all the merchandise there, uh, with no employee, no actual employees there, no actual manager or anything like that. Um, it had been completely taken over by this production company as if they owned everything inside that store that day. So, that you know, whatever was in there, every single, like, imagine in your mind, you're walking down in the mall, the mall is totally empty, and you walk into this Victoria's Secret, and it's completely empty, and there's no one around, and it's just the merchandise there. That's what it was. And then they piled us all into, into it, a whole bunch of women, for this, actually, one of the best scenes in the movie, which is where Paul Blarkett is um, butt-kicked by this angry woman for being... Um, <laughs> kind of naive and insensitive to her appearance and weight issues and things like that, right? And he's just baiting her and baiting her and baiting her, and finally she just decides to uh, kick his butt. And so chaos ensues inside the Victoria's Secret. We shot a, a bunch of scenes, and then the one that I remember is just crossing behind them, because the issue, the, the scene that, uh, that I was in um, involved this uh, beautiful young actress who reminded me of a good friend of mine. I was like, gosh, I, I remember thinking my friend could like totally be this, this actress standard. Um, she's a beautiful actress who was, uh, I'll have to figure out what, her, I'll have to go back and see what her name is, but um, she was this ang this sort of disgruntled customer who was actually like sort of the victim, you know, this, this woman was, <laughs> who was obviously not her size, was trying to buy stuff in her size and they were getting into you know a silly absurd argument over it or, and whatnot and Paul Bart intervenes and then you know a bunch of us are shopping and then all of a sudden chaos ensues and then all of us turn around and we're like oh my gosh the whole store is in chaos as Paul Bart continues to like get his butt whooped so that was the scene and so we did that a whole bunch of times and what do I remember from that I do remember a lot of small fry just couldn't believe that they were just standing in a Victoria's Secret with all the merchandise just <laughs> standing there <laughs> But no one took anything or anything like that because you can't because of continuity, folks. <laughs> Not that they would have anyway, and you shouldn't anyway. And gosh, I mean, why would you? <laughs> Horrible store anyway. Terrible product. Very cheap stuff. Don't even shop there. So <clears throat> anyway, but I just remember everyone laughing because they were just like, they would occasionally take something off of the hanger and like, you know, put it in front of them like they were trying it on and whatnot because, you know, you get bored. In between, in, in between. <laughs> so, you know, you're standing in Victoria's Secret as a female. We're all like, hmm, okay. We're like looking around. We're like, what do they got? You know, <laughs> we're like, what can we just like play with in the moment just to keep ourselves entertained? And then um, after that scene, it was a bunch of running through the mall scenes. Now, these scenes, um, again, like I said, you know, uh, you might look at that and say, gosh, it's chaotic to watch in these scenes where the, you know, the guy's skateboarding, the thugs are chasing the people out of the mall, and uh, the other thugs are chasing people on the second floor of the mall, and then, um, you know, you might think that uh, it's all very difficult to do that, but no, everyone is uh, extremely controlled, and so what happens is everyone gets placed, kind of like, imagine, if you will, uh, a bunch of little players, little little plastic players and your pins and you're putting them on the ground and then you've got like 300 of them you know but you know those little pins with like the little colored heads and you're putting them like on this little strategy board and you've got like 300 of them that's how they position people in the mall and it's very militaristic like and everything is watched everything is controlled down to um them radioing to the nearest uh, PA near you who has a headset telling them, hey, uh, go get that, uh, that, uh, that small fry who has like the coat on and ask them to take the coat off, take the coat away from them. Uh, and they will literally wait while they go and take that coat off from that small fry that you didn't even think or notice. Um, that's one thing I want to point out. Um, but it's all very controlled. And um, so we spent a lot of time shooting those running scenes back and forth. Um, but it didn't take as long as people would think because people are very good and they usually do things in just a few takes. Most, uh, a lot of the dialogue scenes, all the actors are very professional and they did their performances excellently. I never, I don't remember on this set uh, anyone having problems with their lines or anything. It was like everyone was on point, 100%. Like that Victoria's Secret scene, the actresses did a great job, all of them. 
um, both of them, I mean, and, um, of course, the actor playing Kevin James, who I'm convinced is now playing, um, Lee, what's his face, the aeronaut in His Dark Materials, right? That's him, right? Go and look. It's like him, like skinny, skinny version of him. It's Kevin James, or it's Lee, you know, playing Kevin James, I don't know. But I was like, wow. One of my favorite scenes to work on was uh, where Kevin James is playing air, um, Guitar Hero in the store while all the chaos is ensuing. And so a whole bunch of us were assigned to go to the back of him and bang on the windows trying to get his attention while he's playing Guitar Hero. And that was really fun to do because I really like it when they ask the Hollywood Small Fry to do more than just walk by. I think it's fun. It's fun. I love it when they give you direction. They're like, okay, you know, we're going to take about 10 to 20 Hollywood small fries and we're going to have you guys run up and each one of you is going to run up and you're going to be super panicked and you're going to bang on the door like your life depends on it, trying to get Kevin James's, uh, Paul Blart's uh, attention, right? And uh, so we got to do that a couple of times and it was fun and um, I had a good time. And it's like, hey, you know what? You're filming a movie, right? <laughs> Wouldn't be a movie without the small fry. So they do have a little bit of a continuity error, though, just after that. <laughs> Not enough time um, between our scenes banging on the back of the window and uh, everybody clearing out. Continuity, man. <laughs> it's way too clear back there. <laughs> there should have been, like, a couple still milling around. It's, like, totally empty. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> but actually, this production crew was, like, awesome. I remember that uh, every scene that I did film uh, was like pretty ridiculous and there was a lot of laughing. <laughs> there was a lot of laughing involved, which you know what, that's, that's in such short supply these days that that's one thing that it, I'm happy that I remember about working on Paul Blart is that there was just a lot of laughing, a lot of absurdity, and uh, that's what making movies is, right? Because it is all absurd, because it's all an illusion. They're all, it's all just, you know, they're laughing. They're laughing because it's fun, but they're also laughing because these jokes are like, you know, we live in a fake fake world, you know? And I think they know it, we don't, you know? Or they don't think we know it, you know, yet. They think we're sleeping on it. Like, they, they know that to a lot of people, this is their real world, you know, this whole Paul Blart existence. But to them, it's just a big, absurd joke. It's just a big, absurd, funny story, you know? And Paul Blart is just a character and uh, just kind of a caricature of, like Homer Simpson, like of the modern guy's plot, you know, the modern guy's, you know, journey where he tries to make it in this world and just try to get the girl. He just wants to be happy, you know. As a girl, I want that too, you know what I mean? Like, every normal per human can relate to Paul Blart in the sense that they just want to, they just want to see the, the little guy get ahead, right? So it's a very endearing movie, and I'm glad it did well. Uh, just not just because I worked on it, but because uh, it involved so many Hollywood small fry, and it gave them a lot of work, which is great.